very warm welcome to you. Many thanks for being with us on this week's edition of the program. We remain your source for all the latest happenings in the world of business. My name is Lucy Lugwe. You are welcome. On our lineup this week, first we join Faith and her guest, Professor Adams Adebayo, the Lagos State Chairman of the Nigerian Association of Small and Medium Enterprises, NASME, on the CEO rendezvous for the concluding part of their exclusive session where they examined the current state of the Nigerian economy, issues, challenges and prospects for MSMEs. As always, it was a no hold spared session. Take a listen. There's no secret in business again. They will tell you that is the secret. No! If you know something, teach others so that they will not improve. Everybody came to the world with something to be added. Nobody is a ninja. Nobody is an accident. So, if you don't tap from the knowledge and talent of others, you will not know how to do it. Put somebody in doing that and put them together. You know what they do in China? You know, the, the same type of, uh, of clothes, this same, this same suit will be produced by thousands of people and they will only put one brand, one optica we come. On this edition also, we will bring you excerpts from the press briefing put together by the Central Planning Committee for al Hadi Dr. Teslim Sanusi at 80 at the Broker's House Alagomeji. Alaji Dr. Teslim Sanusi is a past president of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers, NCRIB. Let's take a look at what happened. I realize that most people are either not giving to the needy or not giving enough. And I stand to be challenged. People are not giving at all to the needy or they are not giving enough. Another twist is that even when people give, it will only be to those who have hope of giving, to, to those who will give them something back in return, or to those they owe obligation to give like your wives or your husband, your children, or your family, or whatever, you know, the total to all those one more. What more can I say than to urge you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the lineup? Details in just a moment. Please stay with us. Wait, if you tell me that we can give you a, 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 a,
people thought that can be constructed, that can be going front and back, that can do this one. So this is how they started packing. The city very well. They started packing food and exporting this thing to, to Dubai. Wow. And that's exactly what this guy has been. This guy I'm telling you now is a what's made of it. Very, very, very well. He moved from Dubai to Nigeria. He said they are using that same soil. Because we don't have good soil over there. So if it's not adding anything to it, just dry it. See it. Do you even know the cost of it? We are not even looking at them. We are not even looking at them. It's not soil. It's not They check it very well. And it, it's not. So they even thought that we are using to carry blood or this thing. No! This guy has not done anything. He just look at you. That black soil that you are seeing, very rich. Rich in every aspect that is needed. Because that is where you poo that's where you do it. So this line is full of money. People are running away. And people are going abroad to wash the toilet and do all sorts of things. It is not like that. But let me tell you, if government refuses to do their own PT, it's very difficult. The person I've got you to do you about now, if you come back and you get it now, and you collect all this money doing the advance of what is the essence, nobody would like to stay. And they build the environment remaining. Jamming and key to every business to strive is a land of opportunity. So, God gave us some that we can convert renewable energy that we can use. But unfortunately, if we don't have the power and the mind, let governments look at it. Is it part of the thing that government will have assisted us in doing mostly? Is to gather all this talent. You see, I am not against. Getting the talent in the acting area, like with the. Not you, Yeah, but that's not too much. I'm not against that. It's okay. But what I'm saying is that let's look for all this talent. Let's all for all this talent from all these young people and let's put them together. If they have an idea, this is my idea, I can produce this, then go and provide that. No, not the environment is around. Let them be hard. I specialize. In all entrepreneurship and strategic management. So when we come to that, government will be run to that all, let it be well tied to say, let there be security, let have a common use of generator, let there be common use of lights, and let it be the function of government, and let individual come to rent it, pay fee, and move away. You know what? The major problem we are having in Nigeria that people don't realize is that. Everybody wants to be the full uh, managing director of his own brand and products. And it's not like that. We should give an enlightenment to people in terms of education, capacity building. Let me give an example. If a guy is sewing this suit now and they requested for 10 container load of this suit. It will take an in Nigeria about 10 years to get a 10 container. And it will take them just about three, no, okay, four weeks in China to get a 10, to get a 10 container. And I will tell you the secret. It is not that we cannot have it out. You will see someone, a tailor, swing mistress, fashion designer, they have given themselves different names. But that name should have reflected on what they're supposed to be doing. You need to specialize. There is no area of specialization in their own ways of doing things. If you divide this suit now into about five components, somebody will do the color, another will do the button, another will now do the lining, say, and another will do, do the, the lining. lining. And now you say, okay, 10 of you that are going to do the lining. We need 300 lining within eight hours from you. Which of them they will do it and produce? So 300, they will come from that area. So in 10 days, they will be able to have 3,000. 3,000. So if they are able to have their 3,000, the color will have 3,000. Another one line will have 3,000. The bottom one will have 3,000. So at the end of that 10 days that we are talking about, we will have produced 10, that 3,000 pieces of this suit. And look at the number of people. We have divided their division of labor, but you ask only one person to sew this suit, you will be there for one week for two weeks. No, one month. Oh, one month. <laughs> then it cannot be perfect because it's the one doing it. This is, I'm not giving you a sample of where you have a problem. The same person that you don't make the product, for instance, if you are doing this uh, cosmetic for the year, year cream, you will be the one to source for the chemical. 
to be the production manager. Then after the, after after producing the, the products, you will be the marketing manager. You will be the one carrying it around and going around and looking for people. But there is no specialization. Why 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 do you think that is? It's common? because of greediness. People don't believe in that. They will tell you there's a secret. The whole world has been exposed. There's no secret in business again. They will tell you that is the secret. No. If you know something, teach others so that they will not improve. Everybody came to the world with something to be added. Nobody is an intern. Nobody is an accident. So if you don't tap from the knowledge and talent of others, you will know they know how to do it. Put somebody in doing that and put them together. You know what they do in China? They do the, the same type of, uh, of clothes. This same, this same suit will be produced by thousands of people and they will only put one brand. One optica will come. Do you know that the problem we are still having is that everybody wants to maximize their profits and they want to believe that it is my product. No, we need to identify an optica. The optica will speak to somebody. Some of our products that being wasted in the farm, 40% is being wasted before it gets to the town. And that is why you see the Kukuma. I'm a farmer, I'm a rice farmer. And I know what it is to be a rice farmer. We can see that a lot of people that planted rice because of the climate change, which is an insensitive people of our people. The dam we have been building since 1982 up to now has not been completed. If that dam has been completed, you will not be a mover. All these people that are crying now, they will be crying. We will not be talking about this. Look at the normal of investing in the data. We are just not getting it right at any point in time. Every government wants to do their own complete for somebody's status. And let us see, it is not for the benefit of everybody. That is where the greediness comes in. So when you look at it, that, okay, what you have said is that let everybody prepare what they are doing. So when you prepare it, a single person will come as an optica. He, he, he has his money and he needs to give it to everybody. So what he needs to do, put the label in there, or take it from everybody, then go and continue. The money does not have the color, the money does not have an identification. <laughs> like my friend that is doing it, is it, is it no toilet clearing and uh, 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 septic evacuation, he will tell you cheap money, no display. Yeah. So that is it. Money is money. So let everybody have the understanding that it is not until you start this thing and kill yourself into losing it. Let everybody understand that you can start small and grow big. Then when we are starting doing that, another issue is that because of our training, if not for the dollar that is going up now, we have this long short for foreign tastes. All right, welcome back. Moving on, we now bring you highlights from the press briefing and medical outreach as part of activities to mark Alhaji Dr. Teslin Sanusi at 80. Alhaji Sanusi, who is known for philanthropy, opted for service to humanity against having a lavish party to mark his 80th birthday. He has been a lion for over 30 years and members of the Rotary community or rather, his fellow lions were there for the social good. Happy viewing. We have started out today in earnest with the outreach at the insurance broker's house. It is significant that we started here. We were not at the event hall of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers because it is an event hall. It is very significant because our distinguished father and mentor, our Haji Dr. Teslim Sanusi, happened to be the 15th president of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. Therefore, a past president of NCRIB, and by that fact, a life member of the governing board of the Nigerian Council of Registered Insurance Brokers. Um, which other place, by the way, than the insurance broker's house, which he started. And by the time he completed his presidency, he had completed here to about probably 85 to 90 percent. And it is an eloquent testimony, a tangible testimony of his presidency, including other works that we may not touch as much as the way we touch 
the insurance house that has stood as a proud edifice for all professional insurance brokers in Nigeria. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. And it is also to his credit that you will see here a mix of not only insurance people, but also people from different walks of life that serve humanity through the Lions Club International, a platform for which our distinguished father has also been actively involved so many years, ending up as their president. And today also, they have so kindly gathered together to form a formidable group with family members and members of the insurance industry for us to have this beautiful platform. It is indeed my greatest pleasure to be so honored to address this media briefing as a privilege to my 80th birthday celebration. Turning 80, despite the bumpy challenges of life, no doubt calls for deep reflections and profound appreciation to the almighty God for his benevolence of life, blessings and perfect health. I hereby dedicate my life entirely to him. I must also appreciate the entire members of the planning committee for these birthday celebrations, who are selected from a wide spectrum of my relationships, spread across my state of origin, spread across my state of residence, and spread across the professions of insurance, philosophy of tourism, notably the Lounge Club International, my old friends, young and old, and selected individuals from early my nativity, and of course my fellow members, including children and grandchildren, and even great-grandchildren. You have all indeed demonstrated that love is what you give without expecting anything in return. Your commitment or selfish devotion, tenacity of purpose and diligence have given a remarkable hope that the entire celebrations which will be a poker, a poker and satisfy the ends we all hope to accomplish. Although the lineup of what we intend to achieve using this birthday platform may be against the run of thoughts and impression of so many when it comes to marking one's birthday, suffice to note that I have myself marked several birthdays or several landmark birthdays in my life with a lot of party and boogie boogie, you know, <laughs> each one coming with different forms of celebration by friends and wealthy wishers, some of them surprise parties as uh, Otumba uh, Kayadu Shungab just totally mentioned, mentioned in his speech. However, on a deep reflection, I had to give in to the impression to the impressible thought that this celebration should be wholly devoted to philanthropism and give back to the society, especially the needy. I realize that most people are either not giving to the needy or not giving enough, and I stand to be challenged. People are not giving at all to the needy or they are not giving enough. Another twist is that even when people give, it will only be to those who have hope of giving to, to those who will give them something back in return, or to those the whole obligation to give, like your wives or your husband, your children, or your family, or whatever, you know, to, to, to all those one more. So our intention at this event, at all this event, starting from today to the 23rd of December, is to target those who have never we have, we have never met and who we will never hope to meet in life. But who have one deliberating health challenges or the other without any solution in sight, going to lack of access to those who could assist them. When I was presenting glasses up here now, a lot of them show a position, I saw one of them in tears 
But the one that surprised me is that women usually, when women want to appreciate, they hug you, or, or they kneel down, or they shout, uh, whatever, whatever, uh, hallelujah, or uh, something. But this lady did not kneel down. She prostrated. And that always brought just to my hair. I think by a woman prostrating, just for giving her a glass. I hope the press caught her, I caught her picture when she was protesting. People asked her to stand up. For, for many minutes, she refused to stand up. The good means for many, maybe for many months or years, she had been trying to get uh, these glasses. And they said she's going for surgery, free. So you can see. I wouldn't know how lions are selling this culture of giving to the government. If there's any, in any way you are sending this culture to the government, because from the look of things, many of those in governance are not sensitive mm -hmm. of what Nigerians are passing through. Mm -hmm. Some years ago, we know how much a bag of rice cost. Mm -hmm. Today, we it's know huge. how much a bag of rice costs, huge. and so many other items in the market. So, and with the focus of your birthday, give, 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 and give. It's so touchy. That's really touched my mind. So, how do we send this idea to those in the government? And I would also like to know that if they have been selected, maybe how were they selected? Because um, Baba mentioned uh, people that you've not met before, that the intervention is going to um, be focused on. People that we have never met, or you have never met. I mean, they are just. Uh, so how are they selected? You know, if they have been selected, and if they have not, um, how can we tell people that we know around us need this kind of intervention? Thank you. I just want to say what you are doing now is really going to touch a lot of people's hearts. It's going to bring a lot of people to know happiness, and I find it very motivating. And at least for the testimonies that come out from things like this, you know, it makes somebody happy and encouraging mm -hmm. you to you feel like at least helping people in small, small ways, even if it is not in a very big way. So I think this is a very laudable thing that you have done. And I want mm -hmm. to commend you for it, sir. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just want to have that going forward, you as a man, after the celebration, you still have plans to continue with this kind of thing, this kind of CSR project. How to sell this um, program, type of, sort of program to the government? Um, well, uh, how the allowance can sell this type of program to the government? I would say that over the years, we have been doing our best to do that. We are in the, in the, in the, in the sense that we collaborate with the government to carry out a lot of um, such programs over the years. Allowancing was was formed about over 100 years ago in uh, in um, Chicago. The people who sit down to go for lunch, the rich guys who go, go for lunch, when they are going back home, they see poor people, so they, they touch their heart and they say, okay, out of this lunch money, let us go small to mm -hmm. take care of uh, people. And uh, over 50 years ago, uh, now Akinkola Williams, the first African uh, chartered accountant, who is over 100 now, you know, uh, brought lives into mm -hmm. Nigeria. And since then, Lions have been doing their best to uh, carry out programs and to cooperate with the government. Like the Lions, uh, this Lions, uh, both the, the Diabetes Center and the last suit in Ikeja uh, was done with the collaboration of the uh, Lagos State Government on, during the time of Tinubu. Uh, in fact, they commissioned the project. Uh, during the time of um, Mr. Daniel, governor in the Blue State, he collaborated with do that of the high center and by high bank in the hotel, and so on and so on. How did we achieve the people that we have so far? Number one is through radio jingles. We have radio jingles in English, we have in Yoruba, we have in Hausa, we have in Igbo. So we, they, they've been out there, the radio jingles. Yeah. We also have handbills. And bills that have been um, distributed. We still have some more, and I think by the time we are done, the chairman of the media and publicity subcommittee will send some to you. We also um, wrote to so many people, associates of our Hadi Sanusi.
professionals and their family, you know, far and wide, we wrote, wrote out to people, sensitizing them of this very medical outreach. We then used LED um, billboards to also publicize it. And then here we are now. You would recall that um, when I was speaking at the beginning of this press conference, I called on all of you here, gentlemen of the press, to spread the gospel by letting people know that such a, a, a thing is happening and that they can take advantage of it. And then we are also using a very formidable way of disseminating information, which is word of mouth. You know, all of these people you saw today in the hall, when they go back today, you know, chances are that they are going to share the good news of what befell them today. So word of mouth. And I guarantee you that by the grace of God, by the time, if you come back here tomorrow for the second day, everyone will be more than today. So these are some of the ways that we reached in and uh, we used in reaching out to people. Whether we, uh, we have stopped accommodating people, the answer is no. That's our time on the program this week. Many thanks for being a part of it. Join us again, same time, same station next week for a fresh package. We are live and we are social. Connect with us on all our social media platforms. Keep a date with us also on our flagship Pigeon English program, Waiting Insurance Day to Safe, on Ninja FM 102.7, every Wednesday by 9.45 a.m., powered by Nikon. My name is Lucy Ulube. Enjoy our parting shot this week. Bye-bye.